Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make these super fun interactive holiday cards using Lawn Fawn's new shutter die as well as the snow globe add-on for the shutter die and then I am also going to show you how to take the oven add-on from the magic picture changer die to make an oven for the inside of your shutter card if you choose to do so. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start, the, the dies that I'm using here, this comes from the main shutter card die set. I am also gonna use some add-on products just from the shutter card add-on, and then I'm also using the snow globe add-on. So it's a total of three different die sets that you need to be able to make this card. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fold inwards wherever there are those score lines on the card. And then I'm gonna take my two little inside flaps here that I cut out of pattern paper. I cut that out of the six by six um, shine on pattern paper. And I am just gonna line that up right where you see those little score marks on the sides of the, of the card there. And I'm gonna apply my score tape on the front side of the paper on that tab. And I'm using a quarter inch score tape. Now, as you can see, you see those little score lines there. I'm gonna line up the piece so it fits di directly inside of those score lines. And then I'm gonna fold over the flap. And then we have for perfect placement for our little shutter piece on one side. For the other side, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Um, just match it up inside those little score lines, fold over, and then there you go. You have perfect placement. Now we are going to work on coloring in the little scene that we're gonna have in our snow globe. So this piece here with the circle cut out, out of it comes from the shutter card add-on. Um, you can make one of these using the main die, but it's a little complicated, so I would just recommend getting the add-on. Um, the thing about interactive cards is that, you know, you wanna make it as easy and straightforward as possible for yourself because every time you've gotta manipulate something, you're making it more likely that um, the card isn't gonna function properly. So that's why I like to, whenever um, a piece is ready made, I like to um, you know, just go with that instead of having to measure things out and um, you know, figure it out on my, on my own. It just adds more uncertainty to the process, I think. Okay, so we are gonna color in our little scene and I just, um, use the center um, card piece with the little hole cut out as my guide so that I know exactly where my scene is going to appear when we open up the shutter. Um, and I'm just making sure that the main parts of the scene are right in the center of that circle. So I'm just going to color in our little gingerbread house. And then I am also going to um, color in the sky with some blue green shades. Um, if you want to have a snowy scene in the background where it shows up um, really crispy, crisply and clearly, you would use maybe a darker color for the sky. So if you want to make an evening sky, maybe you'd use some like dark violets or some dark blues, and then you could add snow over that and it would really pop. We are going to add snow to the scene, but it's not going to show up that well because the, um, the sky is light colored. Um, but I wanted to keep the scene pretty light because the rest of the colors of the card are going to be kind of light as well. So I'm going to color in our little gingerbread man with some E35, some E57, and then a little bit of E49 just on the little edges of the, of the little gingerbread man just to give a little bit of contrast. I kept the coloring or the color scheme really simple for the scene. So we're just going to use blue, some light blues, um, some red, some browns, and that is pretty much it for the colors that we're going to use. I'm going to color the little peppermints with the red, the scarf red, and the little heart on the gingerbread house red as well. And then I'll just add a little contrast with my R39. And now we can add in some some little um, shadows to the snow in a second, but first I colored in his buttons with some B07, and then I finished coloring in the little chimney there. And then we're gonna add a little bit of definition to the snow with some C3, a little shadow in the background there by the horizon line, and then some BG10 for the little shadows underneath our 
little lollipops and our little gingerbread man's feet. So it looks like he's leaving some imprints there. And now I'm just going to add my snow with a white gel pen. This is a Signo Uniball white gel pen. This is my favorite um, white gel pen for card making. And I'm just going to dot that all over the back. And then once it looks good, we can put it aside and now work on the rest of the card. So to fit it in there, I'm just going to fit it right underneath that um, flap on the top there in the middle. And I made sure to cut out my cardstock so that it is only, I think, two and a half inches across so that it is not wider than the little center panel that's going to go over it. We don't want the rest of the white to show just that little um, section where the snowman and the gingerbread house are. So I'm going to take off the square tape on this top flap here and I'm going to apply our center flap. When you close up your shutters, just make sure that they are overlapped. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so can you see that? Do you see how our two flaps are overlapping each other? So the flap on the left is on top of the flap on the right, but then on the bottom, the flap on the left is underneath the one on the right. And that's important to do just so that the shutter mechanism works. So now we can close down our center flap on top of our little shutters, close up the card, reinforce the folds with the bone folder, and now let's open it up and see how it works. So there we go. Our little shutter mechanism is working and our little snow globe scene pops into view. Now we can move on to decorating the front of the card. So I just Copic colored some little gingerbread men from one of the... Um, I think it's a little little gingerbread people <laughs> um, stamp set from Lawn Fawn that's part of its its new release. I think it goes along with a reveal wheel um, add-on. And I just used it to color in these little images for the front of the card. And now we're going to use the snow globe add-on. So this little center frame here is going to make the frame of our little snow globe. And I'm just going to attach that right over that um, center panel there. And then we're going to put the bottom or the base of the snow globe right underneath that. And this also comes from the snow globe add-on. And it fits just perfectly. And I'm using some of the Lawn Fawn wood grain card stock for that base there. I thought it was a cute little touch for a card that's going to be pretty simple on the center. And then once we finish up the inside of the card, we'll work on putting together the sleeve for the outside of the card. So in order to keep the card shut, we make this little sleeve using the a die cut from the main shutter die set. I, I just can't stop playing with the little card there. <laughs> and um, I just cut out two pieces of this die cut using the Let It Shine pattern paper, we're just going to add score tape to the both flaps, both of the side little flaps there. And then we're just going to attach this so that they make a sleeve. And I'll show you how I do that in a second. So I'm just going to lay one piece over the other at that little um, seam area. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other side. And I'm just going to flip it over so that I can close it neatly there. And then that's it. So that is our sleeve. And now we can decorate it however we want. So I'm going to use this little for you sentiment that comes from the shutter card add on. And I'm going to attach it to this little center circle um, that is part of the the main shutter card die, I believe. And I'm just going to attach that right there. I'm using some glitter, some white glitter cardstock here. And then I'm just going to tape that down onto the front just so that we have this really cute little sleeve with the little sentiment that says for you and now let's put it all together so the first time I did this I had to fumble a little bit until I got the hang of how to slip the card in there and um, what I found was that you want to make your sleeve a little bit loose um, and that will help it slide better and I'll show you how to do that with the next card that we make. And then for the sentiment, it's going to say, have a sweet Christmas. And the sentiment is part of that 
um, little tiny gingerbread set that I mentioned before. And that's it. So this is a pretty simple version of a card. So I'm going to show you some more complex designs using some other products in, in a moment. Um, but let's just enjoy this card for a second. And just, I love that. I love when you open it up and that little snow globe scene just comes into view and it's just so special and cute. And this is a really hearty interactive, um, die. I must say, I kind of opened it and closed it many, many times and it worked fine each and every time. So there's no worry about, um, overuse, um, making the the card not not function over time I don't think okay so now let's move on to our second version of the card so for this we're going to use the oven add-on for the magic picture changer and with just one modification we can make it fit for this card as well so I'm using some of the 12 by 12 pattern paper from the let it shine pattern paper um, set from Lawn Fawn so you could use cardstock for the main uh, base like we did for the first card or you can use 12 by 12 pattern paper which is a great option as well and I'm just going to add in the flaps here so I'm using some glitter paper here that I just had at home I think I just got it at, at Michael's a while ago um, and I'm just gonna apply the flap just like we did before just lining it up so that it fits neatly inside those score lines on the edges putting the tape on the front of the piece and then closing down the side of the card. And there you have it. And then we overlap our little shutter flaps there to make sure the mechanism works properly and just reinforce the folds with a bone folder. Now the thing for this oven card, we need to put it together upside down because the oven is going to open towards the bottom of the card. So for this one, um, you put it together exactly the same way. The only thing that will change is when you put your um, little scene in. You just need to be mindful um, to make sure that you um, do it right side up. And I'll show you how I kind of kept track of which way I needed to um, keep my little circle here. So I'm also just coloring in the areas where it's going to show through. Um, just to make sure that the inside of our oven, the part that I want to show shows through and isn't covered up by that shutter mechanism. Okay, so we're going to put a little Christmas cake inside our oven. And I'm going to add the holly bar berry from A Creature with Stirring stamp set, as well as little cake from A Creature with Stirring stamp set. And then I'm going to mask both of those. And then we'll um, stamp on the tray last. And all of these stamps come from the A Creature with Stirring stamp set. Now for the coloring, I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow underneath the cake and a little bit on top of the cake just so that it looks like the oven is nice and hot and toasty and um, baking this little Christmas cake really, really well. For the baking sheet, I'm going to use some toner gray. So I'm going to use toner gray 2 and then T5 also. And that's pretty much it. We're not going to um, add too much detail to the coloring on our pan here. We'll just blend in the color a little bit with that T2. And now we can move on to coloring our cake. Well, not just yet, I guess. I guess we're going to color in the background. So we're going to use C5 for the background and just let that little glow um, remain untouched. And then we will blend the C5 out with a little bit of C3. And then we're going to take a YR23 to blend the cool grays into the, the little yellow glow there. And then we'll just add a little more Y13 to help with the glow. And again, so little of this scene is going to show through. We just want to kind of give the illusion of just a little bit of lightness there in the back of the oven. So the coloring like outside of the edges doesn't need to be perfect here. For the cake, we're going to make a little chocolatey cake. So I use some um, E55, some E57, and then some E49 for the shading of the cake part. And then for the frosting, 
we're going to use R00, R20, and R22 for the frosting. So these colors match really well with the outside pattern paper. So the outside pattern paper is kind of a pinky, a peachy pink color. And I thought that these shades of Copic match really, really well. So I thought we'd have a little um, peachy frosted Christmas cake. And now we'll draw in our little holly or color in our holly berries as well as the holly. So I'm going to use some reds there and then some yellow greens for the holly berries. So we're going to use some YG01, some YG03, and then I think some YG09 as well. And the berries are YR12, R24, and R29. And now underneath, um, this is going to show in the main scene, so I just wanted to make sure that it had some color here. So underneath the pan is just going to look like the oven is black and dark and along the edges as well. So I'm just filling in that color. And now I left a little note to myself where the bottom was. So I wrote bottom in cool gray along the bottom there. So I remembered um, how I had to place our little scene. I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back there and just slip it in right in the center there. And now we can arrange our shutter. So I'm going to overlap them. And then I'm going to peel off the tape on the bottom tab and then just fold the centerpiece right over that. And there we go. Now it's all perfect. I'm just going to reinforce the fold on the sides with my bone folder. And I just love that. And now we can work on putting the stove together. Now the one modification you need to make for the stove is you need to cut a quarter of an inch off either side. A quarter inch off the left and a quarter inch off the right to make it fit. The stove needs to be exactly the same width as that center piece there because if not the shutters will hit it and, it and the card won't close. So I just cut off a quarter inch on either side and then it's going to fit perfectly on that um, center strip there. And then we can add the rest of the decoration for the stove right on top. So the thing to remember is where those two shutters are on the left and the right, nothing can be in their way. So you can, and I'm going to show you on this oven, there are going to be some parts that extend beyond the center panel, but it's okay because they are not in the way of those two shutter pieces. So we're going to add the frame here to our little oven. So all these dies that I'm adding to the oven to decorate it come from the oven add-on. Uh, as well as this little piece here. So this little piece is wider than the center piece, but it is not in the way of the two shutters. So it is above the, where the shutters are. So it will work. And the same with the bottom piece of the stove. It is below the shutter. So therefore, it's not going to interfere with them working. So now I'm just going to decorate. So we're going to add a little piece of gold strip there just make it look like a little metal handle maybe on the bottom of the stove and then we're going to add this strip to the top of our stove and we're going to attach the little knobs to it in a second there are a lot of different ways to assemble the stove there are a lot of different ways you can use all the different pieces and i have another video with the magic picture changer card in the other oven add-on where i'll show you two other ways that you can use the little die cuts just to make different types of stoves if you're interested in um, in learning that. But for this one, I thought, let's try a method that I hadn't used in the first video. So we'll make a, um, use the pieces differently. So I'm just going to stick the little burners right behind the top of the stove. And there are a few ways to put together the burner. So if you watch that other video, you'll get some other ideas. Then we have this little rack that I'm going to put on top like on the back splash to the stove and then we're going to glue down these little um, metal spoons and little spatula which are also part of the oven add-on and then we have a little pot holder I'm just going to hang that from the edge of the stove so again the pot holder makes sure that it does not um, jut out beyond that center piece there otherwise it'll get in the way of the shutter mechanism so I was careful to make sure that it does not extend beyond I'm going to add the knob so there are I'm adding five knobs in all I thought that was a good number <laughs> um, 
Also, I like having um, odd numbers in, in my card design when I can. And now for the sentiment where it's going to say, let's bake the world a better place. And I'm going to cut apart each word. And then we're going to add it to the gold glitter cardstock. Um, just for an interesting way to add the sentiment. Now, when you're doing this yourself at home, um, this is glitter cardstock. Adhesive doesn't work that well on it. So I did kind of just press in for a while on each of the little letters as I added them. Another danger here in, in doing this method is that the edges of the words can catch when the card opens and closes. So um, unless you're willing to fuss a little bit, I would just be careful putting this together the way that I did. Maybe a better way would be to put the sentiment on the outside of, of the card, like on the pink and white striped sections um, instead of on this little shutter piece. I just thought it'd be cool because then it's sort of like the sentiment comes into view as you open the card. But if you do that, just you need to make sure that the pieces stick down really, really well and that none of the edges pop up at all because they can get caught on the sh shutter mechanism when it opens and closes. So I'm just gonna finish adding our little words here and just pressing down in between for a good 30 seconds I would say I pressed down while I was adding in the little letters and also you'll want to make sure you give this a chance to dry before you try opening and closing it just to make sure that the letters are really um, firmly adhered to the, the background there and I'm using some of the paper bag cardstock for the sentiment from Lawn Fawn with some white embossing powder over it. And that's it. Now let's work on the sleeve for this card. So we're going to put this together exactly like we did the first. Add some score tape on the little flap on each piece. And then we're just going to attach the pieces together. And there, I just wanted to make sure that the adhesive extended all the way to the edge so that um, it didn't come apart. And then I, in order to make the sleeve loose, you're going to want to leave a little bit of room when you um, stick the pieces together. So do you see how I'm leaving like maybe an eighth of an inch gap? And that will help just to give the sleeve a little bit more room so that it fits easily over the card, especially a card that has a lot going on on, on the inside with all those different layers like this oven card does. Now for the front of the card, it's going to say, have a joyful Christmas. The sentiment comes from the Christmas, um, not a creature was stirring stamp set. And just going to close that up. And then I'm going to apply some decoration to the front of the card. So just like that first card that we did, we're going to add a little panel with some Copic colored images to the fronts here. And then there I was just thinking, wondering if I could use that little pot holder somehow. I think I decided no. <laughs> and then we'll just attach our other panel there, put the sleeve on top. And there you have it. So here is our second card with our oven add-on. So let's take a look. Have a joyful Christmas. And then you open it up and it says, let's make the world a better place. With that little Christmas cake right in the center. And I just love this card. I think it's adorable and unique and just really, really sweet. So let's look at some other shutter cards that I've made. So here is a another shutter card that using the snow globe add-on. So I also use some snowflakes from the snow globe add-on to decorate the sleeve a little bit. And then we open it up and then we have this cute little scene with a little snowman and a little house. And then there's a little gold heart like shooting star in the sky there. And I didn't add a sentiment to this one. I just wanted to go nice and simple and I'm using that let it shine pa pattern paper as well as the 12 by 12 paper for the outside base of the card. So let's go ahead and set this one aside and then I'll show you another version that I made using the 
snow globe add-on and then also the snow globe stamp set. So then we have this one. This is probably my favorite one or one of my favorites of the four. So I use the Christmas add-on to the car critters stamp set and I um, just loaded up the car with a Christmas tree and some packages and a little wreath on the front of the car and then you open it up and you have this scene that says I'll be home for Christmas so I just love how the front of the card um, ties in so well with the center of the card and then I'm also using the forest slimline die for those trees in the background in the center so again that's another way you can use your slimline dies and then I love this little license plate it says jingle bells <laughs> on that little car and let's look one more time. And I just love that the little home is on the right there with the little hearts coming out of the chimney. And then we'll put it all together. Add the sleeve back on with our little reindeer and our little, little polar bear. And they've got their Christmas tree and all their gifts. And now here's that first card I made. I also made an alternative sleeve. So I think it also looks nice with the, with the turquoise sleeve as well. Um, just another way to do it and again you can see you could be really really simple with your design like this card or you can get really really um, complex like we did with the little car um, version and then the little oven version so that is all I have for you today everyone I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it gives you some ideas for how, how to use your shutter card dies for the holidays definitely mix and match all your different lawn fawn um, stamp and die sets along with these shutter cards i think you'll have lots and lots of fun just mixing and matching and experimenting and you'll come up with lots of great scenes all right have a great day and i will see you again soon in another video